One day in 1983, after a particularly problematic taping at the Children's Television Workshop, Jim Henson was seen walking into a tavern in Manhattan. He sidled up to the bar, and who should he see, seated right beside him, but the one and only Edgar Bergen. Bergen was sort of slumped at the bar, looking haggard and distraught. Henson, shocked to find himself face to face with his childhood idol, offered to buy the elder puppeteer a stiff drink. Bergen nodded silently, and Henson ordered two vodka tonics. He then spent about 10 to 15 minutes lauding Bergen with praise and admiration, eventually leading into a gentle yet exasperated diatribe about the pitfalls of modern puppetry and children's television politics. It suddenly dawned on Henson that he'd been doing all the talking, and he said, I, I, I'm so sorry, this is, this is probably the last thing you want to hear about. Slowly, Bergen looked up from the bar, glassy-eyed, and turned his face to the pastor of Muppets. His mouth opened suddenly, impossibly wide, to reveal the face of Charlie McCarthy from inside his skull, grimacing angrily, and he said, Shut your frog fucking pie hole and get me another goddamn drink, skin bag! Here's your damn rant show, folks. Greetings, and welcome to Film Rants, violently jamming its fist up the ass of well-meaning filmmakers since 2013. I'm your host, e John Cena! Seriously? I'm your host, E. Adam Thomas, and tonight's film was requested by YouTube member Evil Twin, who writes... Puppet Master, of course, the best horror B-movie ever made. Every time I watch, I can't sleep for a week. I collect dolls, and a few of them are puppets. After I watch this movie for the first time, I put them in a box and shelve them in the hall closet. Intrigued, I was, of course, obliged to take on the gauntlet and view this film, prepared to have my pants scared off. <sighs> Made in 1989, this film spawned a series of sequels, and I had heard over the years that this film had a huge cult following. Directed by... John Cena! Enough, goddammit, alright? Directed by David Schmeller, the basic premise is about marionettes that have been imbued with life by way of an ancient Egyptian curse. They lay dormant for about 50 years in an old hotel after their creator kills himself to avoid his allowing his creations falling into the hands of, well, it's, it's kind of hard to tell whether they're uh, cops, secret agents, secret service agents, Nazi spies, or uh, just a couple of German assholes in trench coats who are looking for some kinky puppet sex. Anyhow... Fifty years later, a group of rather psychotic and perverted mentalists come to the hotel to pay their last respects to the husband of the hotel's current owner, who has, apparently, found the puppets and the spell and decided that the curse, or whatever it was, held the key to immortality. Of course, one mentalist is not a psycho or a pervert and ends up being the only one who can avoid being slaughtered by the deranged puppets and reanimated corpses. Although, he still manages to get the shit beat out of him. Now, to be perfectly honest, I have I had never seen this film prior to Evie's request. Friends had been telling me I should see this movie for about 25 years. But, let's be honest, if I watched every single movie my friends had recommended to me, I'd still be in my mom's basement next to a ginormous stack of VHS tapes with only faint memories of what a real woman's tits actually felt like. It ended up being yet another one of those movies I ended up saying, I'll get around to it someday. Now, after seeing this film, I have to admit, 
I wish I'd watched it in my 20s instead of waiting until I was almost grandpa aged. It's really a badly made movie, but a lot of that badness is actually due to the fact that nobody behind the camera had any illusions that this was either going to be a great film or a huge money maker. I, I strongly suspect that about 80% of all of the cocaine consumed in the late 80s was snorted up by B-movie writers and producers. This movie is literally an 87 minute long line of coke. It's successfully funny in almost all the critically unintentional ways. Even back when Kermit was doing the ultraviolet coffee, coffee commercials in the 1950s. You know, people who don't drink Wilkins coffee just blow up sometimes. Oh, that's a lot of... See what I mean? But Jim Henson at least knew enough to keep his fucking forearm out of the goddamn shot. The acting is appropriately awful, with each character exhibiting the proper level of loony, cartoonish, pervy, psychic archetype. And yes, that really is a thing, apparently. The main puppet, or whatever it is supposed to be called, is uniquely successful at being equal parts funny and creepy as fuck. It's not a movie that exactly went out of its way to be anything more than a weird, pervy, and, and creepy film, but I can't honestly say that there were any real scares, beyond the knowledge that none of the actors could ever look forward to better roles. One actor that, that for me did stand out was William Hickey who played Toulon, the creepy old fart at the very beginning of the film that made the puppets in the first place. According to IMDB, he's actually had quite an auspicious career in film and television, but to be honest, he stood out to me immediately remembering him as the ferret man from the movie Bright Lights Big City with Michael J. Fox. And I think it was Kiefer Sutherland was, was the other guy. I'd love to show you a clip, but uh, I don't have one. YouTube has them all taken down. Fuck you, MGM. Eat a bag of lion dicks. Anyway, tweaking on the strings of the malevolent rentometer, <laughs> we see Artistic gets a three. Because, well, at least some of the puppets looked cool. At least they weren't a bunch of gift shop marionettes. The so-called main puppet with his spiky eyes named Blade did look pretty fucking creepy. I wouldn't want to find that under my bed at two o'clock in the morning. Even now. The others, well, not so much. Anyway, coolness gets a somewhat overgenerous three and a half. If for no other reason than the unintentional humor is even funnier than most of the intentional gags. Originality gets a one. Because, let's face it, marionettes and ventriloquist dummies have always been kind of overdone in, as a horror movie trope and this movie really had absolutely nothing new to offer the genre. In that regard, Suckitude does get a three. Maybe that will teach fucking movie puppeteers to keep their fucking forearm out of the goddamn shot! Anyway, that gives the first Puppet Master film a 4.5 score. Light the blue touch paper and just stand well back. Truly not a masterpiece of horror or, or suspense, but probably more than enjoyable enough to watch hanging out with friends on a weekend of beer bonging. Definitely MST3K worthy. That wraps up another episode of Film Rants, but in the meantime, remember, we're always hoping to hear from you. Email me at filmrantcat at cox.net, comment on this video here on YouTube, or just look us up on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash filmrantseat. A quick note here about our new show, it has been brought to my attention sadly that the title Rantcast is already being used by a podcast and a couple of YouTube users. As has Adam Rants, Adam's Rants, and my mother the car. But fear not, since I've been using the, this word for about two years already, I've decided to call the new show The Rantometer. Politics, pop culture, movies, music, and TV, and of course, all you all, <laughs> will also fall under the scrupulous hammer of The Rantometer starting sometime in December. Next week, in memory of Wes Craven, who we lost on August 30th to brain cancer, we will be looking at his feature film debut, Last House on the Left, which was released on August 30th, 1972. Hmm. 
I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let you ponder on that one for a while. In the meantime, I am eating. <laughs> Fuck you all! I'm, st- I'm, I'm, I'm gonna find the cocksucker who started that fucking John Cena baby, and I'm, I'm gonna rip his fucking balls off. You understand me? I'm gonna bronze them, beat the living fuck out of him with his own fucking molten bronze blood sack. Fuck you, John Cena. Fuck Grumpy Cat, and fuck Rich Astley. Fuck everyone. God fucking damn it! I'm so sick of this goddamn motherfucking shit. I can seriously just eat a motherfucking cow. Where's John Cena? I'm gonna kick him right in the fucking dick. God fucking damn it. Son of a goddamn bitch. Where's my beer? Up here. There's my fucking beer. God fucking damn it. Fuck John Cena. Angry Men Reviews. Many fucks said, no fucks given. Fuck them, kill them, and eat them, boys. Go ahead.